Here's another video on static electricity. So initially we talked about what types of charge there are and there are two types of charge. We have positives and negatives. Protons, electrons. So how do things become charged? How do we get something to become charged? You know, this, this is all neutral stuff right now. I've got a whole bunch of neutral things. How could I get one of them to have, to, to gain a charge? So how can we charge objects? That's what this video is about. Ooh, do, 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 I can spell, how can we charge objects? Turns out we're gonna deal with three ways to charge objects. The first way is friction or rubbing. And this is kind of like um, if you pull the scotch tape off the roll real quickly, it actually becomes charged. When we have two things and we rub them together, we can take two neutral objects and end up with both objects being charged, having a charge. So what is happening in this case? Well, different objects have different electron affinities. Formal, fancy phrase for they like electrons. Affinity just means oh, it likes it. I have an affinity for video gaming. So we might have one object with a really strong electron affinity. It really wants electrons. We have another object and maybe it's happy to give up electrons. So if I rub a plastic rod, for instance, and I rub that with wool or more commonly um, we, we just rub it with some sort of, of fur. And if I rub these two together, it turns out just doo -doo 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 -doo, and here, I'll pretend to do it. Like there, <laughs> rub, <laughs> rub a plastic rod with uh, some fur. And these two objects actually end up charged, even though they both started out neutral. And that's because the plastic rod likes the negatives and the fur is happy to give up its negatives. So the fur gives up some of its negative charges and that means it's left positive and the plastic rod grabs those electrons from the fur, it ends up negative. And so when we have uh, something that's, when we charge something by friction or rubbing, what ends up is we have one that ends up positive and the other object ends up negative. So that's the first way we can get charged objects. The second way, pretty straightforward, charging by contact. And so touch, contact. If I have an object with um, an extra bunch of negatives, so I have a plastic rod that I charged up with some fur, and so it's got a whole bunch of extra negatives. It still has positives, but these are the extras that I'm showing and then I touch it to a metal ball, well, what's going on there? What are these negatives doing to each other? This negative and this negative, they are the same type of charge. They repel each other. This one repels that. They're all repelling each other. They're pushing each other away. They want to get as far away from each other as they can. So when they're on the rod, they're as spread out as they can be, but as soon as I touch, the rod to this nice big metal ball, they say, oh, I got more space. I can have more space. So instead of being all clumped up together, they can spread out. And so that's what happens. We have some of those electrons. They move onto that metal ball and we end up with the metal ball with extra negative charge and the rod has fewer. And this is just charging by contact. It's because these, these electrons are trying to get away from each other. They can spread out more uh, broadly. They have a bigger space to spread out in if they move, so some of them move on to the ball. And so when we have charging by contact, that gives an object the same sign as whatever it was charged with. So if I have a negative rod and I touch it to the ball, the ball becomes negative. If I had a positive rod and I touched it to the ball, the ball would become positive. Charging by contact means the object is given the same sign. So now we have the interesting one, the one I like. Uh, it's kind of like magic. And so the third one, what we have is charging by induction. Okay, charging by induction. Let's say I have 
a negatively charged rod and I bring it near but not touching a metal ball. All right, the metal ball is neutral. So if the charges in the metal ball can are free to move around, what's going to happen? Well, okay, it starts off with all these pluses and minuses and they're in effect paired because there has if it's neutral there has to be one positive for every negative. But what's going on? What are these positives feeling from all these negatives? Well, the positives get attracted to those negatives. What do the negatives feel? The negatives are saying, ah, I want to get away. So if we have that negative rod and we bring it near but not touching, the positives are going to hang out over here and the negatives are going to push, be pushed back over there. It's still neutral because we're no contact, there's no way for electrons to actually get onto the metal ball. So here's the situation we've got if that rod is close but not touching. What we do now is I'm going to touch the metal ball with my hand and my hand is attached to ground. So you know I'm grounded right now. I am literally in contact with the ground. Charges can move zoop, up or down and move through me. So if I'm touching the metal ball, well what's going on? Well these positives are like, well I'm, I, I still like to be over here. This is good. These negatives say, ooh, I can get even farther away. And so the negatives just leave the ball and go to ground because if they see a connection to the earth, the whole planet, they're like, oh, I can get really far away. So I can spread out a lot. So we've got the electrons going down there. And if you want to think about positives moving as well, we know physically it's only the electrons that move, but you can think about it in terms of modeling. You can think about it as both positives and negatives. Um, you can also say, well, if there's a bunch of negatives here, we could have a positive from ground that says, oh, I'd like to get closer. I'm attracted. And so we could have the positives moving there too. Whichever way you want to think about it. it. In truth, it's only the electrons that can move, but for modeling purposes, we can talk about positive movement as well. So what we've got here is electrons leaving. They can get farther away from the thing they're being repelled by and so they take off. So what are we left with then when I take my hand away? Well, we're left with extra positives. And so now I have extra positives. They're all clumped here saying, I like this. And if I then take away the charged rod, so if I remove that charged rod, what's going to happen to all the charges here? Well, now it's just a whole bunch of extra positives. They're going to spread themselves out equally. That's not equal, but hey, <laughs> close enough. And so this is the cool thing. I started with a negatively charged rod and ended up with a positively charged ball. I never touched these two. I never touched this neutral ball. The only thing I touched the neutral ball to was my neutral self, my grounded neutral self. So a neutral object touched by a neutral object with a negatively charged rod close by, we end up with positive. Isn't that cool? I just think that charging by induction is just the coolest thing. So we call this charging by induction. And when we have charging by induction, what we end up with is the thing gets the opposite sign of whatever it was charged by. So if we use a negative rod to charge this ball, we have a negative rod, the ball becomes opposite sign, it becomes positive. And so we've got these three different ways to charge objects. We can do friction rubbing, and then if we rub two things together, one becomes positive, one becomes negative. We can charge by contact, touching, and in that case, we give the object the same sign as what we're charging it with. And then we've got charging by induction, which gives an object the opposite sign of what we charged it with. Now, if I go back to friction and rubbing real quick. So if I rub two things together, um, what I'm saying is they'll become charged. One will become positive, one will become negative. How do we know? 
which one becomes which. And this is where we go to something called the Tribo Electric Series. The Tribo Electric Series, I mean, series, I guess it's a series, it's a table. And we got positives on one side and negatives on the other and a whole bunch of materials. So um, up on the positive end, you might have um, human hair uh, or fur. And down at the negative end, we tend to have our plastics down here, most of our plastics. And what the Tribal Electric Series is telling us is, do things like to become negative? Do they have an electron affinity? They want to grab electrons. Or do they like to become positive? They're happy to give up their electrons. And so if you have two objects and you look at them on the triboelectric series, so I'm going to take a plastic rod and rub it with fur. And I'm going to take those two together. Well, okay, I just look at where they are on the triboelectric series and say, okay, the fur becomes positive, plastic becomes negative. That's how we figure it out. And so that is the basics of charging objects. We've got three ways to charge objects, friction rubbing, contact, induction. And each of those does a different thing. It has a different result. But we're, they're all, in effect, taking neutral, something that's neutral and creating a charged object out of it. All right, there you go.